So, uh, what's up, guys? It's uh, Gary, and welcome to the Studio Dork Podcast. And with me also is... Cameron. And this is actually episode five. Well, hold on. It's episode five, but there might be something coming out before it, and we're not going to count oh, that. Oh, so we're not spectrum. sure. <laughs> so it might be six, it might be this five. Is, so One th- day you might know. So this is, uh, this is Studio Dork episode 4S. Yeah, wait, that's no, the uh, iPhone. No, no wait, no, wrong no, no, thing. No. Yeah, dude. Wait, Studio Dork is filmed before an arrived studio audience. <laughs> the audience. <laughs> yeah. no, I don't know. I practiced that line. So, uh, pretty corny. <laughs> <laughs> so what's been going on with you? How's everything going? Everything's going good. I mean, yeah. you know, just working and we've been doing a ton of stuff over the weekend. We've been yeah. cutting new podcasts. No, no, don't tell them that yet. Yeah. Stuff. Oh yeah, that yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. yeah. Do a new podcast and then, you know, <laughs> why is that one of your topics that I was going to bring up? And you're going to be like, that takes one of my that topics. That takes one of my topics on my list. Now I have a check. That's one out of four. I'm only going to have three things left. All right. Well, you <laughs> you're know, like, that's it. Yeah, I know. That sucks, but it's okay. I didn't have that many either, but. Hey, what's been going on with you, Gary? Oh, thanks for asking, Gary. I was going to go Gary. into that, but I wanted to get a little bit of elaboration <laughs> on So, yeah, what's been going on with you, Gary? Yeah, not too much either. Just, you know, same same uh, bad channel, same time, or however they say it. <laughs> if you could have seen my face right there, it just drops to nothing. <laughs> however they say like, it in America. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. No, yeah, pretty much it's just similar, same stuff. Just been working on some mm-hmm. client work that I've been working on for the last couple of weeks. Same clients. Um, did a few, a few new logos. Had some feedback about another logo that I was mm-hmm. doing, and is that the? That's one of those, yeah. The bike guy. But yeah, well, I'm just gonna say bike know. guy. Beep. We, we can cut it beep. Out if you, want. you can't talk about this bike guy. I don't know. Okay. I don't, I'm all secretive. No, I know. You don't have to like go in specifics. I just want to know if it's the bike guy. Uh, one of them was the bike guy. Then I had another one with like some premium Italian paint. Oh, cool. Little thing and few, that's cool, man. Few other, a few other little things. All right. But well, clients can't live with them. Can't live without them. Totally, definitely. <laughs> no, clients are good. Clients are good because yeah. they feed us. Yeah, we don't starve to death. We don't. Yeah. Because then we would die. Yeah, we would die if we yeah. starve to death. <laughs> Maybe because we technically starve to death. This is going way too long. No, the, the, but the zombies would eat us. But there's no zombies yet. On AMC, there are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's another thing we could probably get into. <laughs> I got Gary in The Walking Dead, and now he's such last a good, week such he's a good show. Pooing my zombie. <laughs> such a good show. And now he's just like, I love him. <laughs> No, uh, that show is so good. So, so good. What do you like about it? I like the fact, not even necessarily the zombies, but just the, the things that the people are going through to survive the zombies and their reactions to the different situations that they're in. That's yeah. what I like about it. Like, just being, just survival, surviving and doing what it takes. And there's, like, some kids there and protecting a kid. Well, kid yeah. yeah. It makes you think, too, like, like if you were in a survival situation, not necessarily zombies, yeah. just anything survival situation, how would you cope with it? How you would react and how, how some of those people are reacting and their similar reactions to how you would be and how you relate to them being in that situation even though you haven't been in that situation. Yeah, 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 totally. I think it's that's what I've always thought was great about zombies was the aspect of not really the zombies. When you first see them, you're like, oh, man, zombies. But then eventually it kind of gets old. Yeah. But then it's the what people do in the situations. like you know, And that's why George A. Romero, if you know anything about his films, sorry, I'm going way zombie really. It's on, all good. George A. Romero, anything about his films, like uh, Night of the Living Dead was originally written as a movie about power struggle right and that's why the gun in the movie is actually like the point of power so they fight over the gun all the time and then like land of the dead was actually originally written as about poverty and so the zombies are supposed to be like the poor people and like the homeless people where are your sources for this information because wikipedia.com is down right now so there's that oh, wikipedia <laughs> i don't know i've never heard of that one but yeah it's uh i actually i saw an interview with him like probably like 10 years ago or something, oh, that he had mentioned something about that, about Land of the Dead. I think it was right before Land of the Dead came out or when it was out on, coming out on DVD or something. So. Right. No, so. yeah, that's a, um, I like that show. Actually, I got into a couple, into a couple shows. I've yeah, been trying Breaking to... Bad, right? Oh. <laughs> you're only a couple episodes in, but you're Such a good in show. love with it already. Yeah, it's a really good show. Super awesome. It's These like, shows just don't feel like shows. They feel like, they feel like movies with, with And plot. the funny thing is, those two are, the, your three top shows are AMC shows. What's the all oh, Mad Men? Mad Men, I they're all AMC. <laughs> you might as well just invest in AMC stock now. <laughs> it's, yeah, because so like basically for me, I haven't really even been watching TV for the last couple of years because I've been just like not nonstop. Yeah, design. we've been in school. So exactly, it's been a lot more design stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so I like literally haven't re- been watching TV at all. So I'm just like catching up to the rest of the world right now with mm-hmm. that stuff. So like in the nighttime after I would finish my design, usually like around ten. 
ten thirty or whatever, I would come out and watch a little Netflix and catch up with that stuff. Hmm. It's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, it seems cool. Uh, that's another thing about Breaking Bad. Like, do you think you'd ever get into that situation? Like, say you just like. If you know you're about to, if like, I don't want to spoil it for anybody that's seen, but if you know you're going to be dying already or something like that, I don't know mm -hmm. what, where your mindset would be. You know, you don't know. If you... No, I, I don't think, I'm more saying like, say that like something happened. Like, say you, I have no good example. I was going to say, say you lost both your hands and you couldn't do design anymore. And you had to do something to make your, but then you wouldn't be able to cook <laughs> because you don't have your hands. So. I would use my feet. Yeah, you'd use your feet. Yeah. It'd be like foot made um, <laughs> crystal meth. That's kind of gross, but it's cool at the same time. You get a little bit of flavor in there. Beep. A little bit of... No, yeah. Why? Did, what, did I, what did I say it was beef? I don't know. Okay. This is going in the remix. Why are you putting beefs in there? <laughs> oh, that would be my beef for me. And then you're like, you already made your beefs a couple times. I wonder how many times I went... In this one. I don't know, but that's three right there. Aww. So I'll hear it eventually, but... Um, but yeah, so is that it? It's just basically TV shows and stuff. You're still doing Arrested Development, right? Yeah, Arrested Development is a really good show, too. Yeah. And I got a lot of good actors on there, like we mentioned. I think we talked about this. Yeah, we people. talked about it before. I'm just giving them an update Yeah, on I'm still watching TV that. I'm still going situation. to the gym. <laughs> yeah, same old, same old. Are you still not watching Arrested Development, except hearing it sometimes from your, from your room uh, when you I'm know, watching I've it? I've watched a couple episodes with you, but yeah, most of the time it's like I'm cutting a podcast. Or, or doing some busy stuff. Yeah, or even playing video games sometimes, yeah. dude. You know, so it's cool. So, yeah, I'm pretty much... And Which video games have you been playing lately? The same ones? I'm still playing Dark Souls, man. Raging Hard on Did you get farther? farther? I'm going to try to beat it this weekend, I think. Because I think you're going, you might be going out of town, right? I might be. So okay. if you end up going out of town, I'll probably just... But if I don't, that. then you won't play it? No, if I, it, then we'll probably be working on our Super Secret Project that's been going oh. on the past couple of weeks. Super so. Secret Project 1 or Super Secret Project 2? Two? 2. The oh, first okay. one, we don't know about yet. Because that requires a lot more out of the site. So. Ah. And these people have no idea what we're talking about, but one day you will. <laughs> one day. So mysterious. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, what did you want to talk about? I got episode? nothing to talk about. I just wanted to cake it and just kind of go with the flow. All right. I've got some stuff, though. So, nah, go ahead and talk I'm just about joking. That. I did have a few things. But, no, you can start off with your, All right. with your stuff. Well, I was looking into some tech news. I decided, like, we kind of could go into just looking at news and stuff because mm -hmm. there's some cool geeky news stuff. There's these guys in, uh, I can't remember where these guys are located. But these guys, they made a real Tron light cycle. Remember the motorcycles from Tron? Yeah. These guys, the Parker Brothers, they actually made a real uh, electric light cycle. And that's not the only cool part about it. That's cool for, like, nerds and stuff. But the, the thing is, the technology within the motorcycle, they use these lithium batteries that have never been used in a vehicle before. And they're, like, supposedly a, a huge quantum leap forward on battery technology. And so they actually, these guys started building these um, electric scooters as well that are... So the light cycle, it ranges about $55,000. They're all handmade, so they're really, really expensive. But these, uh, these other, these like electric scooters that they've mm -hmm. come out with are really cool because they're actually only $2,900. It's kind of a lot for a scooter, but it's fully rechargeable, and it's all, uh, you know, just green energy. And it's just, it's really cool because I guess they developed these, these engines. Uh, it's a 96-volt motor lithium-ion battery. That's what they are, which sounds really cool. Do those know. last a long time? I, you know, they didn't really say, but it, supposedly they're saying that they're totally worth the money. And I Are guess, they rechargeable? Yeah, fully rechargeable, like those cars, except for it's just a little scooter. But you have to, like, die? The battery has to die first so you can reuse it like an iPhone 4S that you did? No, it doesn't have to die first. That's just... Okay, okay. <laughs> when I got my iPhone, okay, I've always heard that all the batteries and all these phones and stuff like that, it's good to let them die their first cycle. Just to get yeah. the full range of the battery. And, and become then, more accurate information on there. Like yeah, it, yeah, something that. like that. Yeah, so I heard but, that too. But yeah, there's a possibility on this. I don't know if you want it to die because what if you're on the 405 or something, you're just driving down the street and all of a sudden it just dies. You're like... Yeah, that's true. If you are on the 405, you're most likely you're driving four miles an hour because <laughs> yeah. the freeway is pretty trafficy. Oh, speaking of traffic. I know, I know what happened today. Oh my gosh. Dude, did you in the morning, that, right? Did you hit that traffic too? The Obama traffic? <laughs> not, not as much as you did because you go exactly that direction, but I went a different... You were going the exact direction that everything was closed. I was a half an hour late for work yep. because and I drove and it was like that whole street that I go down is blocked I off I think completely. I've never in my life ever, like since all the classes I've ever had with you or just everything that we've yeah. ever done, you've never been late to anything ever literally i do not i don't remember ever you being late for anything so that happening is the is like a something really strange. i was super pissed off mm -hmm. all morning i drove the opposite direction trying to get there and that entire street all the way down was completely okay. blocked off until like uh 9 30 and, and he went to chi he went to the roscoe's chicken and waffles yesterday oh really that's where he went yesterday and today oh. he was around
around this area because he's doing Jay Leno today, I think, or yesterday. Yeah, he, he, did, he already did. I saw he him did. on online. But so they closed the street that we live on, going yeah. straight that way. The street that yeah, we're on. Yeah, I know. It's, <laughs> it was a nightmare, man. But it was it was crazy. But uh, there was something I was going to talk about. Uh, I was actually uh, texting you, hey, dog, oh, really? watch out. And I put the text in, but I didn't press send. And when I already got to my office, I was like, oops, I didn't send it. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well, um, to like watch out for the, the interesting thing was, was like, I was like, I was, I was thinking like, how do, cause I'm, I'm still kind of new to LA, mm -hmm. so I don't really know my way around. So I was just kind of driving all over the place trying to figure out how to get past the street. And I remember you talking about ways and I didn't have it on my phone. So I downloaded it while I was driving. Mm -hmm. And so I was kind of using that a little bit, but it's still, there was just traffic everywhere. There's Everything's like, blocked. Everybody's yeah. trying to get a certain, certain direction. Yeah. So nobody can go anywhere. It's horrible. But Waze is a uh, free navigation app. That's really, really, really cool. Really app. cool. It's like a social. Yeah, and it's uh, free, and you earn points. It's kind of like uh, it's kind of like like four square, like a four square type of thing. But you earn points while you drive. It's pretty, pretty cool. Yeah, and if you leave like a note, like you can leave a note saying like, mm -hmm. "Oh, traffic here, or the car yeah. broken down here." And if you do that, you get points and stuff. I think yeah, right. Exactly. And, and it's just it's just a free navigation system. So if you yeah. don't have a, if you don't have a navigation, as long as you have a GPS on your phone, mm -hmm. you get a free job navigation system, which is pretty cool. Yeah, it was cool too because this morning, like I was in traffic, I was all pissed off, and I didn't want to pull my hand away from my steering wheel too much. So I actually I used Surrey to text. The, my two supervisors, and then also email one of my supervisors just in case their phone wasn't working. And I did it all from voice on Surrey. That's cool. It's pretty awesome, dude. What's I, awesome? What's not awesome is that she doesn't understand Russian. Like I was trying to speak Russian to her, and she was. Well, just we say, don't know. I took the phone away from you because you were speaking all No, she all said. Over she, <laughs> because I know how Russians un, are. She said ununderstandable or something. No, like she that. said no comment, Cameron. Same thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so uh, all that and Tron Light Cycle. Yeah. You got something? Up? No, I do actually. Um, so. So I, I, there's this uh, place, lynda.com. I'm sure a lot of you guys know what that place is. A bunch of tutorials and a bunch of uh, very interesting stuff there nonstop. They constantly have uh, all the new software and everything like that going up there, and you could learn it. I think it's like $25 an hour. I mean, tw <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> um, a month, I mean a 20 month. Yeah, $25 a month. And, uh, it's totally worth it. Yeah, it's really, really worth it. Like if you're, if you're a designer, if mm -hmm. you're anything in anything, – um, Anything creative or anything like yeah. that, you can learn any most pretty much every software is on there. It's really, really, totally, really, really yeah. useful. So, um, I was um on there um, a few days ago, I think on the weekend actually, or mm -hmm. the, before that. There's this uh, new thing that came out on there about time management. It's called time time management fundamentals, and the author of it is Dave Crenshaw. Mm -hmm. If I'm pronouncing his name right, um, yeah, it looks right. Yeah. And basically, it's really, really cool. Basically, like when we're we're all we're all, we're always we always have different tasks. And we have different things going on in life, and it's very important to be able to figure stuff out, to organize it, to put it in a calendar, to use all that stuff. We have a lot of tools. It's 2011. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, it's 2011 when you guys are listening to this. It might be 2012. Oh, that's okay. We're just coming near the Mayan <laughs> end of the calendar. Yeah, where it's just death. It's not a big deal. A chupacabra is gonna come and kill us and stuff. A chupacabra. <laughs> I don't know. There's some big. Someone's been in LA for a while. Wait, is that dead <laughs> moment? <laughs> it's okay. <don't. laughs> Here we go. I'll cut it out. <laughs> cut yeah. it out. Yeah. So um, so I, I actually didn't finish this entire uh, um release. Yeah. For for the time management um, uh, what would this be called? Like a tutorial or mm -hmm. something like that. I didn't finish the whole thing, but I finished some of the chapters, and it's really interesting. He just tells you. Basically, to figure mm -hmm. out to not what? No, 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 keep going, keep going. I'm just looking at the chapters, I know, I but know, I, know. I looked at them. No, you no, can no. see the you're, eyeballs. Yeah, no, I know, I know. You're fine. That's all I'm laughing at. I'll tell you later. Oh, I got a booger or something? No, 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 no. <laughs> they can't see you, so I'm not going to do that. You're fine. <laughs> now, nah, um, so it's like uh, basically the mo some of the most important stuff is to keep a lot of your plans in, in not so many places. So if, you, if you're doing a bunch of different things and you're keeping one thing in this calendar, another mm -hmm. thing in that node, then you're keeping something else somewhere else and you have it on a chalkboard and you have it somewhere. Yeah. This and that, you always, you basically, he gives you a place where he wants you, he tells you to not really have more than four or five places. I think five or six places. Like five places and you have an extra place that you could think of. Different places to organize all your stuff. to keep oh, okay. to like a, So you actually keep like a live like a uh, document or something else, and then you just, you have them in a certain place until you're done with them, then you put them in another place. So then you, that way you have everything organized. Oh, okay. And it gives you a lot of different advice and a lot of little techniques and stuff. So I kind of like it. I didn't finish it yet because it just started a few days ago. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, there's some, you have to invest some hours into that. But uh, mm -hmm. it's, uh, I did the thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, it's a, it's a, I mean, I, I like it. I'm going to finish it. I'll let you guys know when I finish that. So oh, okay. I'm enjoying that. Hopefully you guys check that out too. How long is it? 
Like, it uh, says here that it's about three hours long, but I remember uh, it being five hours, so I don't know if I'm looking at the right one now. But, yeah, something like that. Okay. <laughs> you have to invest some hours into it. <laughs> All right. Well, that's cool, man. So, I guess that's really good, especially for people, uh, like, if you're in school. If you got, like, a weekend and you got a couple days to, like... And it's good. even a couple you, hours to watch it, you know, it yeah. might help you. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, try to try to make some time for that because you win in the end. It's, it's really good. Unless you're already good with time, but I think most designers and stuff, um, like, time is very important. Yeah. For, to all people, time mm-hmm. is important. Of course, you only got 24 hours in a day, man. You do. Sometimes you wish there was 27. This is true. There's not. There isn't. Unless you're in a dream, then it's three times faster or something like that. Right? Inception. Uh, (laughs) Whoa! Best movie ever, by the way. I would disagree. Because there's no zombies in it? No, because I watched the movie last night. One of the greatest movies ever. This really? is not even on my topics. You brought up something that I should have oh, Now we're going to be so much longer. <laughs> so. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> I listen. Okay, so I was listening to Smoothiola, which is one of Kevin Smith's podcasts, uh-huh. obviously. And he, he. Obviously, like, we're all supposed to know that, obviously. Well, you know that if I'm talking about a podcast, most likely, like, nine mm-hmm. times out of ten, it's going to be a. a you can listen to the Smith Studio Door podcast. Door podcast. Mm-hmm. Of course, because I have to, to cut them, of course. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, so he was talking. Uh, he actually got. He interviewed. After screening, he interviewed the, the creators of Buckaroo Banzai. Have you ever, ever heard of that movie? Well, nope. it's a movie that came out in 1984. It's an amazing movie. Right. And everybody that said they saw it back then, most of them have gone into the creative field. And so they were giving him praise because basically this dude just wrote like this crazy script. It's like this crazy dude that like wrote this script about basically this one guy that's a brain surgeon, rock star, and he's like just greatest thing in the world and aliens attack and all this crazy stuff happens and it has some of the funniest one-liners you've ever heard so in your was, life. is that on netflix or where is that no actually i couldn't <coughs> find it on netflix so i actually i was so excited about it because i heard so much about it that i rented it on amazon for three bucks and it was totally worth it baller it's totally worth <laughs> no, it no that's dude. cool but yeah dude if you haven't checked out Buck- bucker bonza yet definitely go rent it or something you know like they have it on netflix for dvd but not for streaming so but it's really, really cool. If, if you're into creative stuff, most likely you'll like it. And it's really kind of ironic. And if that movie would have came out like this, like now, all of them, like all the lines in that movie would have become super huge internet memes because it's just so funny. Would I like that movie? I'm not sure. That's the thing because you can't really pigeonhole it. The acting's really good in it. Because like the guy from Harry and the Hendersons, the, the dad, he's one of the main characters in that. You know who I'm talking about. Yeah, right? that's funny. I do. Yeah, yeah. So I figured that would be an easy way to pull to you because... It's just like a eight movies from the eighties, and it's one of those really popular. Also, movies, this movie's so. actually from the eighties, huh? Okay. Yeah, Buck Rubanza is from nineteen eighty four, same year that nineteen eighty four came out. No, the <laughs> no, same year that Back, that, to the, Back to the Future came oh, okay. out. And the funny thing about this is, in this movie, Buck Rubanza, there's a time traveling car as well. Oh. But it just wasn't marketed well. And all is that the stuff. same year that the first like Apple computer came out to the consumers? I think around yeah, that time. Yeah, yeah, nineteen eighty four. Remember that was the commercial, the nineteen eighty four commercial, hmm. where the ladies running down. She throws the. They referenced you know, nineteen eighty four, the movie with that yeah, commercial, yeah. I believe. Yeah, exactly. And it's supposed to be like earth shattering. That's why, like you know, yeah. it's we tried watching nineteen eighty four, and we were both kind of we like, couldn't do it. I don't know if we were like not in the. Like, I think we were just not in the mood. We might have to right? just watch it when we feel very. Something just intelligent something, or something, something about that movie was just like slow or something just didn't something just didn't feel good. <laughs> yeah. No, so um, I talked to like some some friends and some actually some of our old classmates and just different people in the professional industry. Maybe we will get some people yeah on with us and interview them and find out um some different perspectives. So okay. it should be pretty cool. Yeah, dude, totally. I mean, we can. I and we don't say names. <laughs> it. We'll just go on to the next one. Explicit. Oh no. <laughs> um, but. Yeah, so another thing that I found today, while I was doing my research for the show, um, I actually found there's this new technology that was developed by students at, this is really cool, and you're going to be really into this, I think. This is this thing, this ball. Okay, so this ball was developed from the uh, students at, uh, where is that? The Berlin Institute of Technology. What it is, is it's a fully panoramic camera. There's 36 mobile phone cameras in this ball. And basically, you throw it up, and when it gets to the height of the of the toss, it takes a photo. All of them take a photo at once. That's so cool. And then they built software so it would stitch it all together automatically. And so I don't know if we can get this video. To That's work, awesome, though. It's really, really cool, and it's that idea is enough. Last time I did that, it crashed on me. So I'm just like, we could just. But we're not gonna have audio on this. But I just want him to kind of see, and I'll just kind of vamp on it. But it's cool because it's all HD video, so and it shoots in 360 degrees. And some of the examples that one of the guys was giving on the thing that I watched this on like one of the tech news blogs or something. And one of the 
examples that he gave was at a, at, a, at a football game or something, if they had someone throw it out into the field and it would panoramically shoot all around. So that's what they got out of it. And basically you can move it and it's fully panoramic all the way 360. It reminds me of Google. Like when, I know, when right? You, when you view Google Earth, it reminds me of that. And what's crazy is they said all the cameras are HD, so that means all the cameras are shooting pretty high res. Yeah. Which is crazy because they were showing zoom in. You can see like the bird and then there's a bunch of cool stuff. If you, uh, you want to check it out, it's uh, Berlin. I just Googled Berlin Institute of Technology uh, panoramic ball or camera ball. And it's pretty freaking awesome. I think that it's one of the cooler technologies that's come out. And I guess they're going to try and sell it at a tech show this year. And so they're thinking that if someone picks it up, it'll be on the market by next Christmas, which I think is cool. I might, I'd be cool to invest one for a studio dork just to kind of like throw it in a park or something and just get shot. See what we get, yeah. birds flying and people I mean, playing dominoes. Yeah, I mean, it's cool though. If you think about it, like what if, what if these were all macro lenses and you just rolled it through like a yard and it just shot everything that was around? Did you imagine the shots you'd get of all the gravel and all like the really Insects small and stuff, stuff and be super cool? So it's just that right there is just the start of the technology. That's pretty pretty original. Like, yeah, yeah, it's really it's really awesome. Yeah, it's so pretty unique. I dig it, man. Speaking of that, we went to that uh, we went to that photography show this weekend. Yeah, we bought a bunch of new lighting equipment. Yeah, we got some lighting equipment and we got that uh, remote shutter. Yeah, we're gonna try and do some time lapse stuff. We are. Yeah. So, we'll get, so you guys should stay tuned for that. We're getting. Some, we're thinking of some interesting ideas, and if you guys have any ideas for us, let us know. <laughs> yeah, totally. I mean, we we looked up some stuff, and most stuff that we see that we think is really cool, it's been done before. But like yeah. the people are doing it, where they're taking like thousands upon thousands of photos, and basically the photos stitched uh, or like linked together almost look like a, a video. Like a video, so it doesn't make it. It doesn't make it looking. It doesn't look as interesting. Yeah. So we were thinking that like. We wanted to do something where it was a little more choppier, so it had a little more artistic feel yeah, to it. Yeah, the most interesting thing that we found on YouTube, because we did a little research a few days ago mm -hmm. when we first got this stuff, uh, we found um, food rotting. It's pretty much somebody put a camera, and they took, I believe, like a picture every day, yeah. and it shows you the process if you put like a watermelon or something like that. It was that. for like two weeks. For like two weeks, right? Yeah, and gross, but it was cool. Sorry about Beep. that. Oh, I'm going to beat that. It's cool. <laughs> yeah, um, so it was pretty... Uh, it was pretty Pretty cool seeing like, the process of something rotting. That was that was the most yeah. original thing I found. Like yeah, people do skies and you see the, the clouds move and all mm -hmm. that, and it looks it looks cool and, and stuff. But but it's been done so many times. I'm trying to think of something uh something more something more. <laughs> yeah, I mean some of the ideas that we had are not really that original, but we were thinking since we live in LA, we could probably incorporate people somehow, like yeah. just shoot a corner or something or shoot something. You know, like it'd be kind of cool just to shoot the city. To start off with, so I think yeah, we're probably just, just to practice. Gonna, yeah, I think we're gonna start off doing some small stuff and then moving on to bigger stuff and just doing some like unoriginal ideas to maybe gain some knowledge on. on yeah, how just stuff to practice. Works. So then when we do have some original stuff, like when we take it like in the middle of the desert to do some stuff, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Then we're like prepared and we've already we've already um, tried a few things. Yeah, totally. The thing about that, the thing about that remote shutter for time lapsing, it doesn't. Mm -hmm. um, I think it only goes up to 99 shots, which I don't like. It but I still need to do some more. I still need to experiment with a little bit more. Yeah, it could be the brand that we bought or that you bought. But, well, I mean, we can look into it, you know, and just see. But you got a good deal on that thing I regardless. Did. So it's cool to yeah. just at least play with for now and then kind of get used to technology and maybe go look into something that has an infinite amount. So the only thing we need to buy is a bigger card, right? Now you just need a bigger... <laughs> Or maybe yeah. connect it to, to my MacBook Pro and then just have it taking pictures so then yeah. it stores a picture there on the, on the actual laptop rather than the, rather the, than the flash card. Then you pretty mm -hmm. much have almost infinite space. Not infinite, but pretty much almost infinite, however much space you have on your computer. Yeah, yeah, totally. So that's cool, man. Yeah. Also, we recorded yeah. that video this weekend, huh? Oh, well, yeah, we did. We had a little bit of issues. Yeah, we recorded... Should uh, we tell them? I don't really <laughs> want to because... Uh, it's about, it's one of the things for a super secret project that's going on. Oh, is it? <laughs> is well, that the secret project? It's not really super we secret. We talked about it last time, didn't we? Yeah, but that podcast isn't coming out until way after this one. Oh. Or before this one, but <laughs> I guess, you know, by the time you guys hear this, it'll be out. So, uh, our What's Cracking texture, or collection, that's yeah. what I'm calling it, the What's Cracking collection. Right. Basically, we took um, a bunch of eggshells, and we smashed them up, and we we basically took video footage of us taking a bunch of photos that was like two weeks ago yeah right? i did it a little while back and then this weekend we decided you want to let's try to turn it more into like a documentary so let's go ahead and we'll do some interviews and just kind of mm -hmm. explain what we were trying to do with it and so we 
we did some cool stuff where we both set up our iPhones. We had three cameras running. Yeah, we each set up uh, both. I had my iPhone set up, Cameron had his iPhone set up, and then we had the camera set up. So we had so we were gonna do like three different angles and sync them all. So you know, we're not really video people, but yeah. we just we've seen other people do stuff like that, yeah. and we always like experimenting with different ideas. Yeah. So we kind of set that up and we just filmed it, but then. Just uh, some of the videos, uh, uh, <laughs> I guess we're more used to podcasts as we've already like done. Like audio where we can cut stuff out. Yeah, we can cut stuff out and it's easier. And also, you know, like we're barely ever looking in the camera. We're always looking either at each other or down. Yeah. We're never looking at the audience. Yeah. So <laughs> I, guess ne- I guess we might redo that, but you know, it was practice. Yeah, so we're thinking about redoing that. And another thing that we're going to do this week is for our podcast artwork, which you guys probably are seeing right now because we got to it by now. Hopefully. <laughs> we're looking to do like a photo shoot, and Gary's uh, known kind of for his HDR techniques, or he has been for the past couple of years, yeah. since I've known him. And so we're going to do some little photo shoot with the Maybe, dogs. yeah, we're thinking about doing something like that. For the first for the first couple of podcasts, the cover, right, that's what it would be called, like the cover of the podcast? Yeah, yeah, the, the gonna, album cover. The right? album cover, yeah, it's just going to be uh, basically our logo on a... On a record. On a record. Custom made record. Custom made record made that Photoshop, I made in right? Photoshop. Totally awesome. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's just just for now, and then and then we're gonna we're thinking a few about a few other um, more interesting than that concepts to have mm-hmm. on our on our um, on our future podcasts album cover. Yeah, totally. So we're just gonna get goofy and kind of just like yeah, because it's it's studio dark podcast, so we want to want to act dorky. Yeah, so that's what we sense. do. We yeah. don't even have to act it most of the time. We just, just are. Be ourselves. It's kind of just how it is. So. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so that's pretty much what we got going on soon. That's probably gonna it would be this weekend, but I think if you yeah, we'll see. Out of town, we'll see. We'll goes. see what happens. Yeah. yeah, we were gonna do it after this podcast, but then we decided that setting up all our lighting equipment stuff yeah. pretty late. We usually do these at like ten o'clock or like nine thirty, ten o'clock at night. Yeah, on usually Tuesday. on Tuesdays I go to my grandma's on Tuesdays and I visit her and stuff, and then after that I usually come back. I don't know if you guys need to know that. <laughs> it's totally fine. We cut it out if you really don't want <laughs> nah, it. That's okay. His you know, bobbish goes cool. My bobbish so. goes. <laughs> I got her flowers today. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh how nice. Yeah, cause I don't know. I feel bad. She's like kind of sick and stuff, and can barely walk sometimes. And she mm-hmm. makes me food and stuff. I don't know. I got a flower. And she's like, "What's this for?" I'm like, "Happy birthday." She's like, "My birthday was a month ago." <laughs> I was like, "Happy birthday again." <laughs> how do you yeah. say How do you say happy birthday in Russian? It's Is that what you said to her today, or yeah. did you just say it in English? No, I said it in, in Russian. Do you normally talk to her in Russian. I talk to her in Russian, purely in Russian. I really don't have that many people to talk to in Russian. So it's good to kind of keep it. It is, and supposedly my relatives and some when I do speak to people, they tell me that my Russian is pretty good. But I can't read or write, but I could speak and curse and all that stuff in Russian. So oh, cursing <laughs> is so important. <laughs> the important that's stuff. not. not that's not part of speaking at all yeah so i came when i was seven years old so i really didn't learn like too many bad words and stuff mm-hmm. so i really don't know too many bad words but i just know like from like little movies i've seen and stuff like that oh well, that's cool it's always funny when we go to movies like i think the first movie we went and saw or it wasn't one of the first movies but we went and saw limitless and mm-hmm. there was russian bad guys in that oh sh- and when the subtitles came up i remember turning you and being like is that what they really said or like there was something without subtitles yeah. and i asked you what they said and you were just like yeah man they said this and i thought that was so cool like <laughs> i had sat in movies with people that had spoken spanish but most of the time they're yeah. just like blah 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 you know like there's usually subtitles but for some reason russian it's just funny and yeah. the thing about russian is usually they all the bad guys or like a lot of times russians is like seen as bad guys and stuff i don't know i think it's from the red scare and stuff all the communist stuff guess, like yeah. from the older times you know i don't know like the and then, and like, they always make them kind of look drunk. On the yeah. Movies, they're always, like, drunk. Because you guys all love vodka, I right? guess That's we all do. you guys do. Vodka I guess and cereal so. and everything, right? Cereal? Yeah. <laughs> Where'd you get cereal from? Like, you put vodka in cereal oh, instead of milk, you know? We brush our teeth with vodka. <laughs> with the vodka. Um, <laughs> no, I don't, I don't even like vodka, actually. I prefer other things. Yeah. I like Patron, if I... If do I you want to know what's funny, though? Like, if we're going to get into this topic, I found out today, um... Oh, not today. It was, like, a couple weeks ago, but... You know uh, your favorite drink, Jägermeister? Right. You know what that's actually used for? I don't. It's in, uh, I'm, this is what I've heard. I don't know if it's 100% true, so if someone out there is German, let me know. So, about, like, if this is true. Yeah. So in Germany, they do this thing where they eat a crap ton of, like, these huge platters of, like, meat and, like, mm-hmm. huge, really heavy foods. Right. And supposedly, Jägermeister actually is what they use to settle your stomach after a huge meal like that. And so supposedly it settles your stomach after, uh, like, just one shot of it will settle your stomach after, like, a huge meal of just, like, really heavy, like, meat and potatoes and heavy stuff like that. And so I just thought that was really interesting. I don't know where I heard that. I think it might have been when I went to lunch with some people that were talking about it. But, yeah, man, it's just, that's why, like, Oktoberfest, I guess they said, Jägermeister. Yeah, I know beer is one of the things that goes down, but I yeah. guess people, they'll 
We'll throw some Jägermeister. It's kind of a new thing to me. I really didn't know too much about Jäger. Yeah. And I don't really, like, drink too much. Yeah, I don't either. Like, when my friends are whatever, if we're in a safe environment, like my own house or something, like, yeah. then I'm, I feel more comfortable. But I'm not, like, even though I'm Russian and stuff, I'm not typically known as a drinker. Yeah, he says that, but I see him slipping through <laughs> vodka and his milk and all kinds of crazy stuff, dude. I'm just kidding. No, right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but, you know, I just thought that was interesting, the Jaeger thing. I know we're way off topic. And <laughs> but what else do you have on your list, bro? Um, One of the things that was cool, I just thought this was kind of cool. It's, it's kind of design-oriented. It's really, like, mm-hmm. uh, dorky. But, uh... So there was like this big solar flare, and this was like, uh, this was actually like a couple days ago, I think. Let me see, 60, oh no, that was actually today. Today is, I didn't really, oh no, yesterday, sorry. This was yesterday. But which they're is, not going to know. Which is October 24th. Right. There was a huge solar flare that came from the sun, and it's called like a chronal, I guess I didn't write it down. Oh yeah, mass chronal ejection. Mm-hmm. And what it is, is it's, um, it's basically these giant solar winds, uh, they get ejected from the, the sun, and um, what it did was it actually displaced the aurora borealis. You know what that is? The, nor- I don't. the northern lights. I don't know. So in like um, in a lot of the northern, uh, like in Alaska and stuff, there's these weird lights that go over um, that go over the sky, and it's basically just lights from the atmosphere. And so they're normally only in Alaska, but this solar kick up flare thing that happened, it actually shifted it all to the southern part of the United States. And so, this is what they were seeing, if you want to look, I don't know if you can see that. But this, you see all that red sky, it's like red and pink and there's some green. This, right. This is kind of bad, but... You can kind of see it. It's like this wave of light, so if I go back... Yeah, so you can see, this is what it normally looks like in Alaska. It's normally just like green and blue and stuff. Mm-hmm. This one was red and stuff, so it was weird, and it was all in the southern part of the just U.S. Just something about, just because of the reflection of the moon, of the, um... Something, man, but they were talking about it like it was like a big, it was kind of a big deal, and I didn't really know very much about it until I saw it, so... Uh, I thought it was pretty cool, so that was just something that happened yesterday. It's just well, kind of current events with, like dorky tech or not tech but you know space news which space is the final frontier if you ever watch star trek <laughs> yeah you got anything else or do you want me to move didn't on? steve jobs's book come out or something oh yeah yeah yeah. yeah. i you know i heard i didn't hear very much about it i saw the cover of it though it's like basically all white it's that same cover that they had when the day that he passed away that they had on those the, on the album. yeah but did you see the back cover Mm-mm. it's him sitting with that first computer on his lap it's pretty freaking cool that first computer the consumer computer no i didn't see the back cover yeah i saw i forget where i saw it but it was probably when i was looking for inspirations so have you had any issues on your phone with sprint uh with the iphone just just mostly at your job, everywhere else you have pretty good reception? Yeah, I have really bad reception at my work. That's really the only thing. But uh, but there's a new guy that just started, and he has T-Mobile, and he was saying he has really bad reception, too. And everyone else around me has AT&T, and they all told me that they have fine reception. So I think it's just... It just depends on your network. Yeah, yeah, so... But I think AT&T usually and, and T-Mobile, usually they use the same satellites, I think. Oh, yeah? Sprint is different. I believe. I'm not... Don't... Huh. Not well, probably. I got to compare my phone today, my phone to somebody that has a Verizon oh, iPhone nice. 4 and um yeah see I see that I see that cover that, that you were talking about with the, yeah the back cover yeah the back cover of Steve Jobs with the computer that's pretty cool you want what's funny about that back cover look at it again just go in your, your zoom mm-hmm. there's no synopsis on there did you notice that no I didn't see that I didn't notice that yeah so maybe this, this might just be the digital version I'm not positive well no but wouldn't that be interesting because you know how he's their infamous no, notorious for not putting tons of copy on all their products. I wonder if they did that purposely. No just to, just on the to back. brand himself? Like yeah, just to do it like Steve like Jobs Apple. came up with that kind of concept and so now it's just let's carry it through on everything, you know? Yeah. They actually chose a guy. Uh, nice catch with that. They finally chose a um, uh, a writer for the his biopic, the one that Sony's supposedly making. Yeah, there you go. Er, er, or Aaron Sorkin. Yeah, I see Yeah, that. so I guess he's the one that's going to be writing... Do they say what else he wrote? Because I could have sworn he... Something with... I see social network yeah, in his I see picture, the picture, but I don't know, I don't know if he has, he has something to do with it. Uh, do, 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 sorry. Uh, Studios Columbia Pictures. Um, yeah, so... Yeah, so he transitioned the story. Yeah, so he a actually... He helped write Social Network, which a was an amazing movie. And really, like, really good movie. Yeah, I won tons of awards. I was nominated for tons of awards, and... Yeah, the company I work for, actually, they actually got to do a little bit of marketing on it. So it was kind of... I got to look back at some of the marketing recently, and it's really, really cool. So, all of it just seems really clean. But, um, yeah, another thing I wanted to talk about was I was doing uh, a little bit of digging for Daily Inspirations yesterday. Mm-hmm. And I found this guy, and 
And this guy, uh, he does these abstract artworks. And the first time that I saw him, I'm going to show him to you here so you can uh, kind of see what I'm talking about. But these abstract artworks. And the first time that I saw him, I'm down with the abstract stuff, but there is part of me that believes that abstract work is not... You uh, like abstract logos, though. You always I love you always abstract about... logos, just because of how versatile they can be and how much they can have so many double, triple, quadruple, trajillion tri meanings. Like, you just have so many meanings to it. Um, Was that Daily Inspiration 219 that you were talking about? That is 219, and it's not loading his paintings. Awesome! Um... But yeah, so abstract artwork, when I first got into like art and design and stuff like that, I, for some reason I was always like, oh, abstract's the way to go. And the reason I liked it was just because it was so kind of like, there there's, was, you there's couldn't no, pinpoint There's no it. wrong. Exactly. And I think that's why I liked it. And I always thought it was like a rebel because I was like, oh, abstract, that's what I'm down with, you know? <laughs> but in reality, I was just like being dumb and young. But I've seen so many documentaries and stuff on people trying to discount abstract artwork as an artwork or an art form. Because they've, like, what they'll do is they'll give kids, like, they'll give, like, four-year-olds, like, a bunch of crayons and paint and say, oh, go ahead and uh, just paint and stuff. And then they'll let the kids just basically splatter paint all over the place and do all this stuff. And then they'll put it at a, a real gallery and try to put it for, like, thirty or $40,000. And someone will buy it for that, thinking that someone else did it. And then when they tell them what they actually, uh, who actually made it. They feel gypped off. They feel like, no, Ripped there's off. no way. Because the funny thing is, these kids, they... It's funny because what they'll do is when the people start talking about the artwork and stuff, they'll talk about it like, look at all the energy in there. I wonder which, which, like what he was going through. Something in his mind was making him. And then they find out it's a kid and it's like kids can't have those like deep, per, feelings. Like deep feelings for something like that. So it's so, just totally random stuff. And so it's really interesting that like uh, this, this guy came up. His name is Patrick Gunderson. And uh, he's actually, he's not a painter. And I saw his abstract work, and I was like, these are really cool. And there was part of me that was like, for the first time, I was like, I might want to buy a piece of his artwork. For some reason, I just saw it, and I was like, they're super, like, I felt like one of those people at that point where it was just like, I felt something in the artwork. The funniest thing is, though, is this guy is actually, he, he started out as like a painter and stuff, but he doesn't actually paint anymore. And actually, he's, he's a developer, and he coded an algorithm to do those paintings for him. And so all those paintings, they look like they're, they're hand-painted, abstract really? pieces of artwork. So those are it? No, 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 no. I haven't gotten to it yet. I'm trying to get it. You're having trouble getting it to load, too. Urgh. iPads. Uh, I think it's not. I don't think it's our iPad. I no, think I it's know. A, I think it's their server or their hosting. It's a possibility, yeah. So, uh, but you can get kind of a feel for... See, I want you to see the ones that he actually digs. These, the other ones, but... I was looking at his blog, and his blog, he basically detailed out how he started out, where he started out when he was in a trigonometry tree class, just developing algorithms to do paintings for him and stuff. These aren't what I was talking about. These were like startings of him. But I guess he, he said he wrote in ActionScript a way to do algorithms like that, and then eventually he moved it on to PHP and all this stuff. And um, the abstract paintings that I want you to see look more finished than these. Gosh, hold on. I almost want to Should stop. we tell our audience what website that is? Maybe they could check it out. Well, you want to, if you go to studiodark.com on Daily Inspiration 219, uh, you look down near the bottom, it's right before Laura Zombie. So if that loads, guys, that's, these are the ones we're talking about. Yeah, they'll load, they just, they loaded on the computer earlier, they're just not loading on my iPad for some reason, but they're pretty amazing abstract pieces of art, and I think what's more amazing is that they were developed by an algorithm. So he just yeah. developed an algorithm that mixed colors together, and just the the range of value in them, in them is it's just astounding man I, I don't know I've never really felt how I felt when I saw the abstract piece of art it's pretty cool I don't know there's something about it that's really cool and then when I found out it was an algorithm it was really cool I know I'm getting really like dorky dorky <laughs> uh, abstract painting and like you're just stuff, branding but, our site but it's totally cool and then dorky. I guess since we're here Laura Zombie is another chick that she she does watercolor stuff and I was watching there's a video on 219 if you watch it that of her painting something it's at the very bottom, so it's not going to load, Gary. Sorry. I know you're scrolling down there to see it, but her watercolor paintings are absolutely amazing. And, uh, oh, I think I saw that one. It made me... Because one of my things, one of my main techniques is watercolor, just because it's easy, portable, and it's on... In sketchbooks, it's what it used to be when I used to sketch a lot. And so it's just kind of... It made me want to pull out the watercolors again and paint for real, for real. So For real, for real? For real, for real. But, yeah, I mean, definitely check out Pat Patrick Gunderson and Laura Zombie. Why not? You know? You check them out on Daily Inspiration 219 again. So, <laughs> you're playing footsies now? That's cool, you got slippers on. I found a painting of myself by one of our classmates. Oh. Arnell? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
You found? No, he did a painting. The one that 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 they did. I don't know. I found a painting of myself, and I never saw it. I saw it on his blog of me. What he did that? But I never saw that version. But don't you remember? He, I do. Isn't what? that the one that he did, and then he gave it to Aaron, and then Aaron chopped up? He for that did, one but piece? I never saw. The, I saw that, and it was it was good and everything. But I never yeah. saw the version that that Arnell did by himself. Yeah, I mean. Who we're talking about? Our friend Arnell Balia. His last name's really hard to spell. I'm not gonna try to spell it to you, <laughs> but he was featured in a couple of our daily inspirations. He does a. He's an amazing illustrator, and he went to design school with us. And now he, him and his uh, girlfriend, they basically run Ninja Bot. I don't know why I hesitated on that. I almost want to be like him and his wifey. You know, <laughs> <laughs> went hood on them for a second. Same. You can go hood on them. It's right, Studio right. Dork right, hold Hood on, version. Hold on, hold on. Here we go. <laughs> yeah. So our boy Arnell Balia. <laughs> Yeah, him is him is wifey. Uh. Yeah, they they run this 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 website called uh, ninjabot.com. Website? Yeah, you know, and <laughs> the website's not actually up and running yet because Aaron's still working on it. Aaron Wade, his name's he runs his Arius. You know, they they went to design school with us too, and uh, yeah, Arnell's an amazing illustrator. Yeah, he's a really and, good illustrator. Yeah, he can so draw. He, he can draw so good. He's drawn both of us before. Yeah. So it's it's really cool if you have a chance to check out. Uh, I wish I wish I knew which daily inspiration he was on. And his website was like a A B. Oh, A B Positive Design is Arnell's website. Yeah, that's Arnell's website. So A B Positive Design dot com. Uh, it's a pretty amazing. Uh, he he's just he's he's a cool dude, man. And I've tried to talk him into doing some comic book projects, and he just said he doesn't want to do interiors. He wants to just do covers. But I mean, more power to him, man. Those covers probably look pretty amazing. Yeah, so I, I, you're gonna show me that painting now. Yeah, so I just never up. saw it. I never, um, like, I never saw this version. I saw like an edited version, but I never saw that version. And he just, he just has a way of capturing. Oh, you never saw that one. I never saw this one. Oh yeah, I saw him doing that, dude. He finished it before we got done with school. Before he's, he got done with school. I never. I don't remember yeah. seeing that. Yeah, man. Unless unless he showed it to me and I forgot. I don't know. <laughs> that was the one I remember him this showing me. This is all going to get sketch. edited out because it doesn't make sense for them no, no, no. talking about. No, well, I mean, you can go on to which, which blog post this is This is that? just his blog. And you, just, you just go on his blog and you just scroll down and I'm on there. Yeah, it's like a blue one. So it's like the second blog post from the bottom. Yeah, I know. Yeah. David so, uh, David Dinosaur Resto. That's one of our <laughs> friends too. If we're gonna plug friends, why not? So it's davidresto.com. Yeah. Uh, he graduated with he's the teams. he's the um Avenger Dinosaurs guy. If you ever saw any of stuff with the Marvel Dinosaurs, yeah, that was him. He's the one that did that. And I yeah. remember when he did his first one, he thought it was stupid and I said, No, dude, that looks awesome. Yeah, that was a he, pretty creative then idea. He decided to do another one, and then I did the prints for him for a while when, at the print shop that I worked at. Yeah. So yeah, I I don't I haven't really talked to him in a while, so I don't know what he's doing. But this will get edited out. It doesn't matter anyways. No, you can keep it. In. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah. cool. Now they're gonna know my <laughs> <laughs> But I think that's. Are we done yet? I'm um, sleepy. No, just kidding. <laughs> well, I do. I do. I, I only want to touch on one last thing. One last thing. Uh, we. I know we said it on that podcast. Mm -hmm. The we just got interviewed by Martin Batista. Batista. He's one of our friends from school. He's still in school, and he just wanted to be interviewed for. He he needed us. He needed an interview for one of his classes. Yeah, I like some people in the in the field already. So basically, we both he interviewed both of us, mm -hmm. and it was like a 40, 45 minute thing. It might be on a podcast before this one or after this one. We're probably going to release. I'm going to do it before. Before, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I want to. So you guys probably heard this already, if you guys. Yeah. So to this. we just want to reiterate because I know we thanked him last time, but Gary was actually asleep, and I recorded something at the end. I just want to reiterate that um, that we we just want to thank him again yeah, for so. for interviewing us, and we also want to let anybody. Uh, Anybody that wants to wants to interview out us. there, either if they're interested in the site and they mm -hmm. either want some, they want to know something about us. Mm -hmm. Definitely, you can ask us questions on Facebook, Twitter. Yeah, feel free to ask us about anything. Yeah, we'll facebookcom slash dork, twittercom slash dork, mm -hmm. or at studio dork. You know, that's a little bit easier to find us. And then also our contact section of our website, you just go on there and send us an email. We'll always we'll try to answer back either by email. And if your if your questions are interesting, we might call you on Skype and do like we do with Martin. And just basically record like a small, like actually, even of the if podcast. your questions are not interesting, we'll still call you on Skype. All right, and maybe you, maybe you're, <laughs> maybe you're in school and you need to interview like a design professional. Well, we consider ourselves professionals. When we say in school, we mean literally in school in that moment while you're interviewing. <laughs> no, 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 no. We don't want to disrupt any learning that goes no, on. No, learning is important. We only want to give you yes. knowledge. Okay. So, but if you have any questions, definitely check us out and uh, hit us up. We Let just want to up. thank Martin again for doing that. And we actually, he played it for his class today. Yeah. And I got a little feedback from one of our friends that was in his class and he said he, he liked it. Yeah. So nice. It's good because that that's the first podcast we've actually ever put out. Yeah. There. 
yeah. these, this is actually our first sign of getting to the celebrity level, so... Um, oh, yeah? So now you're going to start being like, <laughs> getting an intern being like, get me coffee! <laughs> I don't drink coffee, but get me coffee! Get me coffee so I can throw it in your face! <laughs> That's not right! That's not the right coffee! You're showing them the real side of you! <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so... After that, you know, it's, we had fun with that. No, know? it was good, good times. Yeah, we did that actually on Saturday morning and stuff, so... Yeah, so... Uh, is that pretty much it? Yeah. All right, well, this has been the podcast for StudioDork.com, and we just want to thank you guys for listening. Thank you so, so much for lending us your ears. We appreciate that a lot. And stay dorky. Very dorky. Cheers. Yeah. <laughs> don't be, laugh fool. It would um, be three, two. Oh, you don't say one. You don't no. say that because oh my you God. start recording. Somebody's, cool, somebody's never done this. Yeah, Wait, Studio Dork is filmed before an arrived studio audience. No, actually it's not. <laughs> 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 Get it the audience. <laughs>